Gorilla pop charts are based purely on opinion. These lists are ordered according to the Royal Gorilla's opinion, so make them flick with your opinion. But that does not mean that either opinion is incorrect. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below, as your opinion also matters, and we'd like to hear what our subscribers have to say. But please remember, these are all opinion, and if your opinion conflicts with the Royal Gorilla's opinion, then that's life. Hey there guys, I'm the Royal Gorilla, and today I'll be giving you a rundown of my top 10 games of E3 2014. Now I usually would only do a top 5, but I couldn't narrow down my selection to 5, nor could I put these games in any particular order. So these won't be ranked in any way, and these are simply 10 games that I thought looked incredible. So in no particular order, let's begin. Ok so the first game I want to talk about is Evolve. Now Evolve is shaping up to be the next Left 4 Dead. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun with the humans vs monster gameplay. I love the way the systems work where each human has a special attribute to that character whereas the monsters can combine different attributes to make themselves most powerful. It's a nice way of working where the monster has to be solo whereas the players have to be a team. However there's one thing I would say about this. I've noticed since the current gen started that there's been an increase in online only games. Just to name two, Titanfall and Plants vs Zombies. Now I have a theory that when Microsoft originally announced the Xbox One as being always online, Developers saw this as a reason to create games which were online only. And I myself love single player games. So especially with Evolve, I'd really like to see some single player. And I'd be quite sad if that's not the case. Because if, like me, you have no one to play with, then the multiplayer is going to get old pretty fast. But I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Okay, so next up we have Tom Clancy's The Division. Now once again we're returning to New York and this time it's post-apocalyptic. But this isn't zombies, this isn't war, this time it's a virus. It's not that original of an idea, but the way it's being created seems to be a step up from the competition. It looks like it's got the standard, high quality gameplay seen in most Tom Clancy games. So it should be really nice to play. This is another game that seems to have a big focus on online play. However, more than Evolve, Tom Clancy's The Division seems to be a game that would be good to play solo as well as with a team. And one additional thing, this game looks beautiful. That's enough said. Okay, so sticking with Tom Clancy, we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now I had a choice between putting Battlefield Hardline or this in the list, and I decided that Siege looked more interesting to me than Hardline. See, my problem with Battlefield Hardline, it just looks like more of the same Battlefield, just with extra game modes and different skins on the vehicles and characters. Whereas Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six The Siege looks like it could give us a really good cops and robbers experience. The trend's continuing with this game because we've got more cooperative online play and for the Siege in particular it looks like having some teammates that you can talk to is going to be really useful. So it looks like I'm going to have to get some friends before all these new games come out. Now way back in the days of the Xbox 360 when it was fresh and new face, we had a lovely game which was great fun called Crackdown. Crackdown was about being a cop but you were more of a superhero cop because you had like genetic enhancements and a powerful suit. And at E3 this year they revealed the new Crackdown game. And it looks like more of the same. But don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing at all. We didn't actually get to see any gameplay, it was just a pre-rendered trailer. But that's enough to get me excited for it. One of the interesting things about the new Crackdown game is that it will be using the cloud to help run the game. This is supposedly to help it run better and for the graphics to look the best they possibly can. So we'll just have to wait and see how well that actually works. Ok let's move over to Ubisoft now with Far Cry 4. Now if you've been on my channel for a while you know that I love Far Cry 3 and I did loads of videos to do with it including Sunday Night Fights which were great fun to make. Now Far Cry 4 is shaping up to look really good. At E3 this year we got to see the first 5 minutes gameplay. We were introduced to the new antagonist of the game which I can't remember his name right now. And it all looks really good, really exciting, and the gameplay looks like more of the great Far Cry that we love. Except this time we have elephants, gyrocopters, and co-op play in the open world game. So all of that is just bound to improve on the great Far Cry experience that we all loved in Far Cry 3. Also the new location of the Himalayas means we've got far more options when getting around and doing missions. So it'll be really interesting to see how the location reflects on the gameplay. Ok so this next game I was actually quite disappointed with at E3 but I'm still excited for it nonetheless. The reason I was disappointed with it because we didn't actually see any gameplay and it is of course Star Wars Battlefront. At E3 all we got to see was some footage of the developers working on the game. We got to see some small snippets of the actual game on computer screens but hardly enough to satisfy our desire. That's all I really have to say about that, I was disappointed by the trailer we got and I'm just going to keep an eye out online for when more news of Battlefront comes out. 
So we've all heard about the awful Aliens Colonial Marines. Well, if you saw E3 this year, you would have seen gameplay of Alien Isolation, which looks like it's going to do to Alien what Batman Arkham Asylum did for Batman. Alien Isolation is looking to be one of the best Alien games out there. Rather than the emphasis being on combat, it's on hiding and sneaking around to outsmart the Alien. You could compare the game to Slender in a way, in the way that the Alien acts and will actively hunt you down during your game. At E3, we actually saw that Alien wasn't the only enemy in the game. We also have to contend with other humans, as well as cyborgs, which are either malfunctioning or just as scared as we are and trying to do anything they can to survive. So that'll change up the gameplay and keep it fresh, rather than just constantly running away from the Alien. So I'm really excited to get my hands on it, even though I probably will crap my pants when I play it. By far my favourite trailer from E3 this year was the Dead Island 2 trailer. Now it was something I wasn't expecting at all, because Dead Island Riptide could have easily been the end of the franchise, although everyone was hoping for a new game. It was revealed at the PlayStation conference but will be coming to all three systems, that's including PC. And what really struck me about the trailer is, whereas most of the Dead Island trailers are normally dramatic and emotional, this was quite light hearted and I really enjoyed watching it. And the song in it is really good, if you haven't heard it, go and have a look at the trailer. The song is called The Bomb by Pigeon John and it's just awesome all round. So I absolutely can't wait to get my hands on a new zombie game because people haven't been developing them lately because people are getting bored of them apparently, but I love zombies nonetheless. Okay, we're down to our last two games now, and the next one is actually kind of interesting. It's not entirely a game yet, that's the thing, it's still in like large amounts of development. But Criterion announced that they have a prototype in the works for a new game based around driving, flying, driving a boat, uh, that's what you call it isn't it? but it all looks really exciting. So their Burnout series had a huge emphasis on crashing, and they recognised this as something gamers loved. So their new game is trying to amp this up. We now have helicopters, boats, cars, motorbikes, all in the same game, all which can be driven, and all which can be crashed. We didn't get to see too much of the game, we got to see some concept and some very early development footage but it's looking really exciting. And at one moment in the trailer, a player jumps from a helicopter onto the back of a quad bike. And a game which allows me to do anything like that, I can definitely get behind. So I can't wait for that. Okay, I know I said I wasn't putting these in any particular order, but this would have to be the game that gets me most excited from E3 this year. Now it's actually an indie game that was announced at the PlayStation conference, and it is of course No Man's Sky. So if you haven't heard of No Man's Sky, it's essentially a space exploration game where you have a spaceship and you can go anywhere you want. It's all procedurally generated, so it's always random and you'll never see the same thing twice. The great thing about this game is you can be flying in space one minute, fly down to a planet, land, get out of your spaceship, have a look around, there'd be giant monsters, all these weird alien creatures, you might find a base, you might find another spaceship, you might find friendly people, you might find enemies, and you do whatever you want in the game. A game like this gets me really excited. I could see this having the potential of Minecraft, just to have that worldwide following and almost limitless possibilities, meaning gameplay can last as long as you want. One of the great things about it is you choose how you want to play. If you want to go down to a planet and just look around and have an explore, that's fine, you can do that. If you want to go down to the planet and kill everything in sight, you can do that too, it's completely your choice. And I love games that are about choice. I love games about exploration, and I just love games about space. This will, without doubt, be my most anticipated game of the year, and I absolutely can't wait to get my hands on it when it comes out. So there you go guys, that was my top 10 games of E3 2014. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and in the comment section below let me know what games you found particularly exciting. As always guys, remember to like, comment and subscribe. I've been the Royal Gorilla, over and out. His name is Luke and he's more than your average gamer. No ordinary let's player. No bad easter eggs much better. Da 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 da. His name is Luke aka the Royal Gorilla. Even bigger than the giant Godzilla. Follow him in every game he goes. Da 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 da. He's almost got everything you need from GTA 5 to Assassin's Creed.